Hello my creatives and welcome to another video. Today I am going to continue to work on my snowmobile project which is actually making ephemera that you can also use in your junk journal but I am going to send that to other people in a nice way uh, project. Uh, so we made in the I am back video this pocket together. I have several if you watch the video you know there are more. Uh, then in the video after that, I created these envelopes from book pages, which is a beginner friendly tutorial. And today we are going to create some tags with book pages and I'm going to share some ephemera, how I create that with you. Then, um, yeah, that's the plan for today, what I want to share with you and um, yeah, let's, let's get crafty. So first things first, I want to share with you this very cool book. So uh, I bought this uh, very cool book at a thrift store here in the Netherlands. It is called Bloemen in Aquarel, Deel 2, uh, <laughs> Flowers in Watercolor, Part 2. Uh, it didn't have the dust jacket or anything. It was just the blue book. So I grabbed it because, well, it intrigued me that I didn't see anything. And when I opened it up, I saw this and immediately I thought if I cut these pages in half I have tags. So as you know I am creating a red colored, a green colored, a yellow colored and a purple colored snail mail package pocket which is actually junk journal ephemera. Um, and I thought I would want to create a tag so I used this uh, book to create a tag. Uh, I also want to do that for the green color because I haven't created anything for the green color yet and what I did was actually well go to the green part in this book and now I'm going to find what I want to use. There's not a lot of choice so I think I will go for this leaf here. Um, now all I'm going to do is take out my ruler and Lay it next to this line and then I'm going to tear it out. So that is all we are going to do then. I already made some of these tags and I used a very very ugly paper in the background. So this had four sports on there. Uh, I, I don't know when I would you know scrapbook anything with sports but I did really like the color so when I put this on here I saw that um, I could make a lining out of this. I need to trim a little bit from this um, side because I figured out not all these columns are evenly spaced which frustrates me because I'm a graphic designer and sh they should be evenly spaced but okay fine. So that is what we are going to do. Then I also wanted to share this very cool book with you. Uh, it's, it's a Dutch book of course because well I go to Dutch thrift stores but it is a book uh, of garden plants and you can choose them but if you open it up it was so cool you have these I don't know tons of illustrations on squares because they're all by twos right with all leaves and botanicals and it's not just one of these stacks no it's four this book is filled with these illustrations. So Dutchies, if you see this book, grab it. <laughs> um, it is super cool. So I will pick up, pick out some uh, green flowers, leaves or white because well, the white ones can also go with a the green theme. Um, to add as ephemera uh, in, my, in my snail mail for the recipient. So um, here's also a very nice red flower. Uh, I picked out uh, three of these because I did, wasn't sure yet what I wanted to do with these but I know now I think that I just want to add these as images for the recipient to use. I tear them out and I'm going to add them in the ephemera pocket holder thingy. Um, I also already added some washi tape in these pockets. Um, but I will share that with all of you later on. So uh, yeah, so I just wanted to share this book because it is super cool and I'm going to... Oh, I love this. I'm going to add this one to the green. Yes. Okay, so I chose one for the green now. 
also trying to rip this one out because well and I also take off this green edge uh, this this time it is a green edge the last time it was a yellow edge or another color I didn't think it went well with the theme so but I this one will go into my green pocket so that's also what I want to share with you about this book now let's go back to the tags uh, I want to create two tags today uh, so I want to create one with this and I want to create one with my masterboard because I think it is a lot of fun if the recipient would get a tag uh, from my masterboard which I used for the pocket in their meal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this si um, shape that I already cut out. It is, I will measure it for you so you can remake it if you would like. It's three inches by five and a quarter inch yes i made this template with a corner snipped off uh, from a gift card something th thing and all i'm going to do now is line this up and i am going to snip i have to find my scissors going to snip off these corners like so and I'm also going to do that on the other side yes and now I have a very nice tag for the recipient to collage on so they have their own background I will not do anything else to this because I think that is up to the recipient I love it when I get backgrounds like these because usually I I don't make them like this right there are papers on there that I don't have so I think this is always a great goodie so if someone can do something what they want you can add just words or maybe a Tim Holtz person or sew around it or ink around it or make an eyelid hole or put you know some ribbon up here anything you like to create your own ephemera so I'm going to add this as well to the stack and do that with all the colors but of course I will do that off camera because you don't have to see me snip corners with all of them um, then to this one so what I need is my paper cutter uh, I have this tonic one I love this one I'm going to cut this at about here, I guess. Because if I put it on this now, we have a decent border around this. I want this to be. I'm going to make a mark with my pencil because I'm making it extremely difficult for myself and it doesn't have to be this difficult I'm going to line this up I am going to check how big I would like to have my border which is around here and then I'm going to cut this to size so it doesn't matter that there was this illustration on here uh, with the soccer things or football or hockey whatever it was uh, because you will not see that anymore once I have done my thing and added my illustration it looks like there is something else going on you can't see the image you just see color difference and that is what I like then I will take my little template and that is why I made this because I would like to make several of these um, and I don't like the hassle with the cut corners I also thought it would be a good idea to have a standard corner or something in my stash to use when I cut things like this so I think this is a good corner I could um, snip on the other sides another corner away in a different size or different angle 
but I haven't found something else yet with a that I needed a different size so but when I do I will just snip another corner off and change the size so that's my handy dandy tool now this will be the base of my tag but of course it's a little bit you know new and shiny so I'm taking distress oxide walnut stain and um, I'm going to do something very nice and that is I'm going to damage the paper with my scissors now you have these uh, very cool distressing tools um, I don't have that <laughs> I uh, sometimes I think should I buy it and then I think yeah but you know my scissor can do this as well um, I don't know if there is is there maybe a safety it's a safety thing I guess that you should get that other tool thingy but if it's just for safety then I don't know let me know the ones that have that tool thingy is, is so much different than this scissor doing this I don't know I, th I really think it's just a safety thingy but uh, yeah so I use my scissors for that and then I will take my distress side and I'm going to ink so I am going to ink around the edges on the front I'm also going to ink on the back uh, because I would like the back to be a writing space um, for the one who gets this so I I think about when I make ephemera for someone else I think about how they could use that uh, could use it and with tags I for example really like to put tags in my journal uh, and journal on the back of them so I would like to have some journaling space on the back now this is pretty cream colored paper but you know the edges look too new so that is why I'm distressing it a little bit maybe we should add a little stamp on the back I'm not quite sure yet if I want to maybe we will see of course I also need to ink up this now this is pretty glossy kind of book paper I don't care if I have glossy book paper or matte book paper or whatever I just care about what the image is on the book page and if it's a pretty image I'm going to use it if it really bothers me that it is glossy I can always take matte medium and put that on top and everything with matte medium turns matte I use that for magazines images in my art journals and they turn matte so if it would really really bother me I could add matte medium but it doesn't so that is the first step complete of this tag and then it is time to glue this down so let's use that horrible glue stick that I still have two of to go through. I think I'm going to create another monster board. I, oh, I also, uh, talking about another monster board, I already have another amazing project in mind. I just started making that project and um, I'm going to make a, a different um, or the same format but on <laughs> filming the process because then I already figured everything out, right? But it is super cool and it also involves scraps it's kind of like a masterboard again um, but with a little twist and using it in a different way so I'm super excited about that um, it is a little bit of a bigger project so I um, need a little bit more time to film when I do so do create a project for you because now I'm filming this on Sunday evening because I was excited <laughs> to film again after my video released and um, Yes, you all, you guys were just so excited that I was back and stuff. And then I was like, yes, I'm also excited. I want to create more. So yeah, that's why I'm here. Now, um, so this is, this is the base, of course. You know, you could leave it here, but um, I don't think so. <laughs> I think it's a little bit dull still. So I want to take um, two of these Tracy Fox labels. And I want them, I want to add them to this tag. I want the neutral ones. 
and they are in the back of my journal. I think this is a nice one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I should move everything a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing on my tag. So this one. I also hope that I'm not in screen with my head this much as I did with the last video. But I don't know, of course, if I am. So, because I can't see myself all the time. So I hope we are okay. Uh, but I'm not quite sure we are. Maybe here and then this one over here. Or here. Yes, I like that. Okay. That was some quick decision making. <laughs> Whoa! I have to be honest, I already made some prototypes. So I know the design that I want and I know kinda how I want it, but not completely. So uh, I think that is the trick for real time videos though, is that you already kinda know what you're going to do. I'm not sure, uh, or at least it's good to do this when starting out with the real-time videos because I am so used to being able to cut everything out that I'm doing or not doing um, or just time-lapse it, right? Um, that this is a different type of content creating but I don't know, I very much enjoy it. Maybe it is because it is nothing like what I did before or it is like what I did before but nothing like what I did before. Uh, so it, it doesn't give me any stress, you know, with what I had before. So, yeah, I don't know. It's At least I'm having fun, right? It's all about having fun. So next up, I want to add some stamping. And I'm going to use the Tim Holtz Field Notes set for that. And now I know I need to take it a little bit towards me because otherwise you will see my... <laughs> beautiful gray hair in the screen. I will try not to do so. So, okay. I want to take my archival ink and my stamp blocks and I am going to stamp with this one and I'm going to take the shipment collect I am going to use this big number and I am going to this one. Okay, so now I'm going to figure out how I want to use these stamps. I think I want to add this one here. I want to add and the shipments collect maybe on this side this one here mm -mm -mm. I want to add this one here and something Something like this, I guess. Yeah. Just going for it. Like I said, with the decision making. I And I also think that if you <laughs> are filming real time, like I'm doing right now, um, I should less wonder and just more, be more, I also think it's more about confidence. Be more confident in the choices that I'm making. Uh, of course, I haven't created a long time, so I'm a little bit rusty, so I'm second guessing myself. I will take this a little bit towards me so you don't see my head, hopefully. Um, so I'm second guessing myself a little bit. Um, wondering if this is really what I want to do um, instead of, you know. I also found my chamois again. Um, so I will clean it with, with this. Um, yeah, what I said. I'm wondering if is this is really what I wanted to want to do. Isn't there something better? Can I still do this? Um, so I think I also have a little bit of a trouble with, well, with that. And um, not knowing my supplies anymore. Because 
Well, I run into things I, I didn't even know anymore I had because I haven't created for so long. <laughs> so I have certain Tim Holtz products. I was like, what? I bought this? I can't remember. Um, because if you don't do a certain thing for a long time, <laughs> you of course forget what you have, right? <laughs> so I forgot what I had. Now, um, this ink is still wet because this paper is a little bit shiny. Uh, so it needs a little bit of a dry. Usually I would just dry, let this dry, but I'm going to give it a quick blast with my heat tool. So I will be right back. I, I think it's dry enough and I have decided that I want to have a tag topper. And at first I thought I maybe wanted to do an eyelid, but I thought it needed something extra. Uh, so I decided to create a tag topper with this ribbon fabric stuff that I have in my stash. I like the color and I like that I can uh, grunge it up a little bit. So I think this is the size that I want. So let's cut a piece. So I'm going to fluff or rip a bit apart on these edges and take some of the frets off so it frays a little bit more gives a more of a vintagey look which i like a bit more rustic a little bit more you know nature kind of look then what i'm going to do is I am not going to glue this, I'm going to sew this. But if you don't have a sewing machine, that doesn't matter because you can still just use glue. Uh, just glue, a put a strip of glue here or on your fabric and put it on there. And then you put that also on the back and then you have a wonderful tag topper. So I am going to sew this. I'm also going to sew all around this tag shape. If you don't have a sewing machine, you can do a doodly border. I will show you my famous doodly border um, for the ones that are new here and don't, don't know me. Hi, I'm Kira. I am a doodly border girl. I border everything. Um, yeah, so a doodly border, if I put it on this page, is when you just make lines like this and you can keep it like this. So it's just cross, but what I like to do is add these little squiggles in there, like it is sewing. So you can do that around the edges and that would also look amazing if you don't have a sewing machine. So if I'm talking about a doodly border, that's the doodly border. I will probably use it on other projects, but not on this one today. So I'm going to sew this and then I will be back. So I finished my tags. So I'm going to uh, show you the one up close we made together. Um, this is the green one we made together. I have sewn uh, twice around here in the tab. And then I also decided to stamp on the back one step on top and one step on the bottom. That's for all of them. So there is something on the back. And uh, these are all of the tags that I made with the book and these labels in the same stamps. So I use the same products on all of these tags, but they still look a little bit different, right? They are of course the same style, but they all look a little bit different. It depends on where you put your labels, where you put your stamps, um, how you stamp them, and um, what the image is. So everything has a certain color and I really, really like it. And you cannot see that this was a sports paper background that was never that I was never going to use. So what I thought would be fun if we would, um, well, see what we have already. Uh, I have collected some goodies off camera uh, and I want to see if I am pleased with the amount of stuff that I have collected or not. And um, first I am taking my pocket, of course, because it is going inside the pocket. And this tag is going inside my pocket. 
I think I want to do it like this. I don't know, maybe I want to change it around. I'm not sure yet. Uh, because the other big thing that I have is the envelope we made in the previous video uh, that will contain my letter. Of course, I still need to write that, but my letter will be in here. And I want to add this here. Like, do I want to add it like this? With these things, it's all about how you uh, place <laughs> certain things, if they look nice. Uh, it can also be that I place them in here right now and I will change it up before I send it out. I am not sure yet, but I want to have a feel and I, I thought it would be fun if I would do that to, with you together. So we both get a feel for it and then you know what it is that I, I don't know, look at. I think that's the value of this real-time process instead of time-lapsing is that I can easily share real-time my thoughts with you on what I'm creating and why I'm doing certain things or why I change certain things or keep them a certain way. Okay, so this will be the base. Then I have collected for all of them a washi sample. Um, so this is, for, of course, obviously for the purple one. And I have uh, this insect washi. So I cut off a strip. Uh, so you have one of each on them. And I added that as well. Because I thought that would look great. And I want to put that in this um, pocket here. And it was a perfect fit. Uh, I already tested that out. Of course, I'm now <laughs> I'm having trouble putting it in there, but it was a perfect fit. Then I also have that for the uh, green one. I made a green washi sample and I made sure to have a certain logic in all of them so they would be somewhat the same. I also chose playing cards. They have a red background, but I chose black ones. Um, clubs or anything like that on purpose uh, so if you see that it's not uh, suddenly a different color I don't know I'm very much a sucker for controlled color palettes I enjoy making those and I feel if I create controlled color palettes I feel that my <laughs> my projects are in balance I don't know it makes me really, really happy <laughs> to create controlled color palettes. So this is the red one. And even though I used, this is the fun part, I, I used for the red one a lot of modern scraps. It still has a vintage look because of all the other things that I'm doing to it. Um, and that is what I like about creating and creating with supplies from all kinds of um, books or... Whatever, it doesn't really matter because it is about the overall look. So I will add in the washi. Okay, very much liking this. Then I also have these cards because I have bought these um, on Etsy. I am not sure where anymore, uh, but these are these time slot cards. So I think I want to add this side up and I'm going to put that here in the back I guess because this tag is of course quite blank yes so that's a little bit of a surprise on the back I'm going to add that in here so then we have three somewhat bigger pieces in there so that's also a nice vintage ephemera piece for someone else to use so I put them in okay so this is how they are looking now on the front we also created these tags I made this green one with you just from the master board so the recipient can create their own tag uh, with my master board um, so it fits if they want to create a journal page or anything I didn't back these because I think the recipient needs to decide what they want to back them with 
Uh, sometimes they want to use them as a panel, sometimes they want to use them as a journaling spot on its own. Um, I will not be the judge of that, but I think it looks great on the back because this is of course the master board and then we have it like here. So I'm going to add this on the back so it balances out the patterns and colors a little bit. I actually really enjoy this. I'm actually, I really, really love this project. <laughs> I'm super happy with this. I also collected uh, from these coin envelopes. So I, last year I was able to get a box with a thousand of these for one euro or something. I don't know, at the thrift store. Uh, so I, I, I have a stack on the side here and I like to spread these around in my snail mail um, to others because, well, we all love little envelopes, right? So I'm going to put them in the front because they are uh, neutral. And I think that would look great here as a little addition. I'm not going to decorate them on purpose because I think the recipient would like to have the opportunity to decorate them themselves. Actually really liking where this is going. Then Last, what I have collected is, I have collected these, I actually really like this, these images. And I think I have decided what I want to do. I want to add some of these, some of these, and I'm going to add a few postage stamps to make little goodie bags. So I will be back when I have created the goodie bags and then I will share it with you. I think after that we have put in enough stuff for a meal. I think then my meal is ready and I only need to make envelopes which I will do in another video. But I will be back. I am going to make my little goodie bags and share with, that, with you what there's inside. Okay. I have found the stuff that I want to put in these goodie bags. So I have these plastic goodie bags with polka dots bought on AliExpress, I think eight years ago, I don't know. Um, I am going to add in each pocket uh, three of these flower images from that one book that I showed you in the beginning. Um, this book. <clears throat> and I go, I'm going to add them like this. Um, in that pocket so they fit in like this they also give a little bit of sturdiness to pocket which is nice then I'm adding uh, in each of them three stamps these ones are red of course uh, because well it's the red bag then I add three of these postal thingies and three of the yellow ones in the in the bags and that is the formula for all of them. I, I don't know. I always make these bags on or snail mail on feeling uh, what I think is enough or something. I don't know. Uh, I often feel like I don't send enough. I, I, feel, I feel like I should be sending more stuff. Which, of course, is not true, but because I think if I would receive this, I was like, oh my gosh, you sent so much stuff to me. But, yeah, I don't know. I often feel that I don't, you know, send enough stuff. But I guess I think that is not true. Or my rational mind thinks it's not true, because if I look at these meals, they look packed with stuff. So I put these uh, cards here and these ones here and then the images are inside and I'm going to add this into um, this back pocket, I guess. Yes, I'm going to add that behind my washi tape. And then it is done. I'm going to pack all of these and uh, yeah, we are going to put them in the in the mail. I think that I 
am done after this with these nails or done uh, we 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 need to add the so I want to have the stems on one side and I want to have these other other ones on the other side I don't know why <laughs> I think it looks pleasing to my eye uh, we, um, I'm done with the inside, I guess. Uh, of course, I still need to write the letter. I, I probably will type my letter. I usually do handwritten letters, uh, but lately I don't feel patient and my handwriting really changes. Sometimes it's super sloppy and sometimes it is extremely neat. And uh, lately it is, it has been a very sloppy handwriting. And also I have to write four letters, which feels like a lot, <laughs> which um, demotivates me and I can type a lot faster. So I will probably type my letters and maybe design some um, writing paper underneath it and, you know, use my graphic design skills for that. So that's what I will probably do. And then in the next video, we are going to create the envelopes that I will be using to send out these mails. And I can tell you that I will probably use book pages <laughs> uh, for these envelopes. And they will be super easy to create. Uh, I love to create envelopes like that. Does it fit? Oh, yes, it does. Amazing! I love it when everything fits perfectly. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, I am going to uh, yeah create these envelopes. I lost my train of thought. Create these envelopes probably from book pages. Of course, do some decorating on them, and then they are good to go, uh, I guess. Yeah, except for the letters. And of course, I will add the name, uh, but I will not add the names of the people in this uh, video because uh, I will share the video, uh, but <laughs> people have not received my snail oil at the time that I'm going to share this video. So I will make sure to not add their names, but imagine there is a name. Maybe I will stamp out my own name to show you. I don't know, but the names of the people will be put on the mail here. Um, I will take photos of that, so I will probably share once they arrived or there is enough time uh, past the date I sent them and the probability that they arrived. I will probably share a photo of um, the mails with the names. Because it does give a different look. Okay, so I am super happy with this. This is how we are going to do it. Um, I was supposed to make flat nails. Of course, these, these are not flat anymore. Um, it's mainly because of the washi tape. Because the papers are pretty, pretty flat. The washi tape is bulking it up here in this pocket. Uh, but for me, living in the Netherlands, that is no uh, problem at all. So this is how far we are with the snowmill pockets. I'm very, very excited. Today we made the tags uh, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one when we create the actual envelopes that we use to send them out. But of course you can also use these envelopes to put in your junk journals. Everything I used today, you can use as ephemera in your junk journal. Everything you saw, you can use it as ephemera in your junk journal so don't feel like this is snail mail only you can i use this snail mail but i would also use this in my junk journal so i really hope that you enjoyed this um, video and then i will see you all next time bye